My name's Keith, and uh, from my perspective, today is really simple. If you're not doing something different within three months from now that you look back to today as a result of this particular talk, and you say, gosh, it was because of that talk that I'm now changing this practice or doing something fundamentally different, then I will have failed you. All right, so that's the hurdle of success. So I could talk a lot about where I came from or what I did. You can read that on a bio. Um, I'd like to talk about what I do and what's my passion. Today, my passion is that I run a research institute for changing human behavior in the workplace. It kind of happened, interestingly enough, about uh, 10 years ago, literally to this year, I wrote a book called Never Eat Alone. Some of you might have picked it up or read it. My mom and her three friends. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> and after writing that book, Never Eat Alone, I knew that it was the formula to unleashing potential in your life because everything you want to hope Everything you want to do, everything you dream of, between here and there, people are going to be responsible and capable of helping you achieve that. And my book, Never Eat Alone, was the number one book and has been for 10 years, and it's actually one of the best business book sellers in the last 50 years. And it's because of that critical component that people are the critical dimension of your success. And the question is, how do you navigate that? How do you build that rich, authentic, vulnerable network in your life? Right? So I wrote this book. And at the time, uh, you know, I had just, I was chief marketing officer at Starwood Hotels. We, we invented the Starwood Ho Ho Star Preferred Guest Program, the Heavenly Bed, the W Hotel Chain. Those are the kind of things that I was working on and leading in my corporate life. And then I went and I wrote this book, and all of a sudden people started asking me to speak. People started to ask me to, and literally the book was the tipping point. Um, asking me to speak, asking me to, for my opinion, asking me to come in and consult to their organizations, and I had to make a choice. Do I want to continue down the corporate path or do I want to become an entrepreneur, really talking and evangelizing about something that I'm powerfully concerned about and interested in? So I went in that direction. And then I started working with people to try to unleash the potential of relationships in their lives, not as individuals, but in corporations. We managed the cultural transformation of General Motors coming out of bankruptcy. We coached every senior partner at Accenture in their development of billions of dollars worth of business within their, within their network. So everything that we've done has been predominantly in large corporate B2B kind of work is the business that I created for Farazi Greenlight. And I gotta tell you something, they pissed me off because I'd tell them stuff to do and they wouldn't necessarily do it. And I'd be like, wait a second, this really is inane. You know and agree as you're sitting here getting your training, you should do something. You're going to leave here and you're not going to do it. So it started shifting my mind and my focus onto a whole different area, which is why in the hell don't people do what they're supposed to do when they know what they're supposed to do? And so in addition to focusing, and here what was really interesting, and this is where it all kind of comes together. So my book told you that to build a great authentic life, you need great authentic relationships. Networking wasn't something you go out and work somebody, get something from. A, a networking event wasn't an opportunity to run around and pass out as many business cards as you possibly can, get a list of names, and use them and work them. Right? A lot of people think that's what networking is, but instead it was an opportunity to walk into a room and ask yourself, how do I make people successful today? How do I make people feel good about themselves today? How do I take my mission and find other people who could share that mission today? Right? And really realize that that great networking and great relationships are born from generosity and authenticity, right? Not what you can get out of somebody, but what you can give. Because that earns the permission as the foundation to build the real relationship where you can build great things and partnerships and co-create off of it. Does that make sense to folks? So with that in mind, I started a research institute for changing human behavior. And I went out and I started working with some people from the Gallup organization and a bunch of others. And here's what we interestingly found. When I took these people who I wanted to teach to do something. And I organized them into small groups of four. And in the same training, I said, just for the hell of it, this small group of four, you're gonna commit to making each other successful during this training. 